Hi, you're watching TechCrunch TV. My name is Colleen Taylor. Here with me in the studio is Tony Schneider, who's the CEO of Automatic, the company that runs WordPress.com, among a few other applications, properties. Um, today, WordPress just rolled out um, a new vertical specifically for restaurants. So we're pleased to have you come by and talk about it a bit. It's great to be here. So just explain to me, um, what is it that came out today? Sure. Today we launch on WordPress.com, um, WordPress.com slash restaurants. And so it's a place you would go if you have a restaurant and you want a website for your restaurant and you want to use WordPress, but you want it in just one package that's sort of ready for you to go. So you just start putting in your photos and your pictures of your food and your menus and we make a site for you. I see. And so, and this is something that I understand you guys have kind of been doing um, this is the fourth, right, in a series of sort of custom verticals that have just come out over the past few months here? Right. Yeah, we started with weddings, um, uh, actually a couple months ago now, and that was very popular. So now we've, we've done more. So uh, there's also one for bands um, and uh, one for cities. So if, you have, if your town needs a website, and now restaurants. So, and now, especially with the restaurants thing, I guess, um, explain to me what exactly is different here because it's always been that a restaurant could theoretically use WordPress to create their site. Um, what's special here? Right. And many, many restaurants, they use WordPress already. So what's special here is one is runs on WordPress.com. So it's fully hosted, managed, run by us. So it's WordPress in the cloud. You just sign up and we run all the software for you. And number two, it's it's basic WordPress plus a little bit extra to make it suitable for restaurants. So you don't have to learn WordPress, find the right plugins for a restaurant and sort of set it up yourself or have somebody set it up. So it's, a, it's like a starter package. And uh, w restaurants, very similar to other verticals where I would say 90% of the site is just standard WordPress. And then at last 10% is just special to what you need. So in the case of a restaurant, um, you want to have a way to take reservations, you want to have a way to have a, your menu for your food and change it a lot and uh, things like that. So that's, that's the last 10% we sort of pulled together. Now, restaurant websites are kind of notoriously bad <laughs> often um, if they're just kind of created by an independent developer that maybe they've contracted. There's a lot of flash going on. Is right. this going to address that? I suppose WordPress has a nice mobile interface. Yeah, and actually with this one, uh, the team started with mobile. And because a lot of times you pull out your phone, you look up a restaurant, it doesn't even show up on your phone if it's on Flash or it's just clearly was designed. The site was designed long before you know, iPhones came out. Um, so the team started with a website on the phone and then expanded it out after that to make sure it looks good at larger, on, on larger uh, screens as well. But uh, on the phone, what you want is you want to load fast. Everything's formatted nicely. The maps and directions work. So you can just click, and it takes you there. The phone number works. You just click, and it calls. So things like that are all built in. And so what does this say about Automatic's kind of overall strategy, or WordPress.com's overall strategy? When you talk about these different verticals, it's clear that you're sort of going after um, even more of a business case than you know just publishing. I mean, TechCrunch, full disclosure, uses WordPress. A lot of publishers do, <laughs> um, but now it seems like you're really going after you know beyond publishers, really specifically to businesses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really where WordPress as a platform is going, and we're just following the lead of the community because uh, you know WordPress. And when I say WordPress, I mean both WordPress.org, the open source version that you download and run yourself, and WordPress.com that we run as a service. WordPress as a whole started in blogging, I would say personal blogging, and then went to professional blogging. And then it became a, just a content management system, so people started building all kinds of websites. And now it, those websites get more specialized into small business areas like restaurants. And like you said earlier, people are already using WordPress for these things. We're, we're just now making it easier for people, so it turns from a do-it-yourself kind of system to a just sign up and it just works. And so. when you look at the competitive landscape and when I think about what people typically use to build maybe city websites or you know restaurant websites, I think Drupal maybe, what, what else is out there that people would use? I mean, what do you think of as a competitive landscape for WordPress.com and Automatic today? Mm -hmm. WordPress is very broad. It's used for so many things. We sort of have different <laughs> competitors in different areas. But if you look at um, 
overall, if you look at the entire internet and just go down the list of what do all the different sites run, uh, WordPress is um, about 17, I just looked up numbers exactly, 17.4% of all the sites on the internet are powered by WordPress. The next, the number two platform is jo uh, Joomla. Okay. They're around 3%, and then uh, Drupal's around 2 and something, and then I believe Blogger's number four on a one, one and a half percent. So, and then, so and then actually, if you notice, it doesn't add up to 100%. So actually the majority of the web is still custom-made sites that don't use a content management system. So, so when somebody looks for a platform to build a website, it's usually WordPress or Joomla or Drupal are sort of the top three choices, and you know WordPress is doing very well there. If you start getting into restaurants or bands or plumbers or anything, they're sort of different people who have done different things in those areas, and you, you get very specialized very quickly. Um, cities, I'm sure there are companies out there who specialize in just making government websites for cities. And so for us, it's a little bit different. Depending on which area we're in, we have sort of different competitors. Right. Um, cool. And those numbers are hugely impressive, actually, 17% of all the web. Can you, are there any other numbers that you can give me, the latest out of, out of WordPress? Sure. Uh, another number we track is um, for automatic, for our company, uh, we track uh, just how big our network of sites is that we run. And so that includes WordPress.com. But it also includes um, services like Poll Daddy, which mm. is um, a service we run, or um, services like Jetpack, which is a plugin for WordPress.org users to plug into WordPress.com. If you take all of that together, uh, basically everything we run on our servers, um, we call it the automatic network. Um, we have uh, about, I think it's over 660 million monthly unique visitors. So it's. Um, that's according to Quantcast, and we're the biggest network on Quantcast, and that's a exciting number for us, just because that's like Facebook and Google scale. Right. And so, where do you go from here? We're about to enter into the new year. Is there any kind of big focus that you're looking at, or any big milestones or goals that you're especially looking at in the coming six or twelve months? Definitely. So, one thing is what I said earlier, which is just watching the WordPress ecosystem and what people are doing with the platform and supporting that and, and adopting it as well. Um, and, and uh, you know, other areas are things everybody's working on. Like, obviously, mobile is hugely important. We have a set of uh, mobile applications for WordPress um, that we develop uh, that are open source um, that we are just growing really, really rapidly. And anything happening on both phones and tablets is obviously hugely important. If you have a website, if you're on WordPress and you already have a website, you make sure it works really well on those platforms. So that's an area we're investing in a, a lot. Um, another one is uh, what uh, we call the WordPress Reader, which um, is something we've really slowly started rolling out on WordPress.com, where for the first time now, it's no longer just WordPress as a publishing platform, but also as a reading or consumption platform. So you know, WordPress.com, we now make it very easy for uh, bloggers to follow each other, like each other, reblog each other. So you can really um, have a, not just your blog by yourself or your site, right. you know, but really more of a community of, of WordPress sites and bring that together. And how careful do you have to be when you think about changing things like that? Because when you have such massive reach, I'd imagine that you hear it. Every time there's a little change, there's going to be a lot of people who don't like it. <laughs> um, how do you yeah. think about how, how do you think about being sensitive to those people but still growing? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, two things. One is um, WordPress actually as a whole has always been very good about backwards compatibility. So even today, if you have a WordPress site that you, know, you built years ago and you want to upgrade to the latest version of WordPress, it still works. So as a platform, we've always been careful that we really try not break anything because we don't want to go back and tell people, you know, have to redo your site because there's a new version. Um, because that upsets people <laughs> when, when that happens. Um, the second thing is that when we do just change things like the user experience or something like this new reader type of interface, we try and do it just for new users going forward first. So when you're a new person joins on WordPress.com, they don't have an expectation of it working a certain way. And then as it really gets, we find out people really like it and it's great, then we sort of bring older users over. But in all of it, we try and really keep everything around and have lots of different ways to access everything so that 
we don't just tell people, okay, you got to, <laughs> you, know, you got to relearn everything. Right. Um, oh, and one more thing I want to mention that is we were big believers in s small incremental changes. So we release code multiple times a day, still even at our scale, and just change one feature versus, you know, you wait six months and then everything changes at once because that's when people get annoyed. Interesting. So would you say, is, is that, you know, it sounds like that's right down to an engineering philosophy or how, is that like a continuous deployment thing or so it's not Absolutely. just every six months then it's a big ship day? Yes. Yeah, ah. we have, uh, I, I, I've lost track of the exact number, but I think WordPress.com over the years have we've had probably close to 50,000 releases at this point and we still do dozens a day sometimes. And so we've designed everything, even the company's now over 130 people. We still, everybody in the company can release code to production just any time. We've optimized it so that can happen very quickly so that um, you can release code quickly, but you can also unrelease it quickly if you break something. So you can go back very fast. <laughs> right, <laughs> that's, that's good. I mean, we can do that on WordPress at TechCrunch too. When we write a post, we can just change it very quickly and that's helpful for us as writers. So I'd imagine for coders, it's good too. Um, <laughs> since you're the CEO of Automatic, I have to ask this question. Um, and you had mentioned, you know, you're on the scale of the Facebooks um, when it comes to reach and how many people your product reaches. So mm -hmm. next question is, are you going to have an initial public offering like Facebook? What's happening on the strategic level of Automatic? Um, at the strategic level, uh, <laughs> we're doing really well as a business. Um, we, uh, our business is scaling really well. We have, even, even though we're very, very big from a footprint traffic point of view, we do only have over 130 people, so we've been able to build all of this without requiring a giant, you know, expensive company. So it's scaling well, the uh, business is profitable and doing really well, and we, uh, we're just continuing to build it out. We've been sort of slow and steady over the years, very, very much like WordPress itself, kind of an organic approach to just growing at a steady pace versus, you know, doing like a huge, you know, hire a thousand people at once and try and go huge, and that's worked well for us. Makes sense. Well, Tony Schneider, thank you for coming by TechCrunch, showing us uh, WordPress for restaurants, and stay in touch. Thank you.